Hi everyone! In this video we're going to learn about correlation coefficient, how to compute it, and how to use it to determine if the linear association exists between two variables. Let's start with the formal definition of the correlation coefficient. So the linear correlation coefficient, another name is Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, is a measure of the strength and direction of the linear association or relation between two quantitative variables. Now we can compute correlation coefficient for population and in that case we're going to denote it by Greek letter rho or we can compute sample correlation coefficient which happens more often since we work with samples more often rather than with the entire population. And in this case we denote the correlation coefficient by the lowercase r. Let's review the properties of the correlation coefficient that were introduced in the previous video. The correlation coefficient is a number that can range from negative 1 to 1. When the correlation coefficient equals to 0 or anywhere close to 0, then no linear association exists between the two variables, in which case points on the scatter plot will not show any distinct pattern. But as correlation coefficient moves further away from zero, association becomes stronger and stronger. Compare the two linear associations with correlation coefficients 0 0.6 and negative 0 0.9. Which one is further away from zero? Well, the one that has correlation coefficient negative 0 0.9. And as you can see, points on a scatter plot come closer to some imaginary straight line compared to the association with correlation coefficient 0 0.6, where points are more scattered, even though overall we can see some linear pattern. And now the linear associations with correlation coefficients exactly 1 or negative 1 are called the exact linear associations, in which case the points on the scatter plot lie exactly on a line, so here and here. Well, that is the illustration how the correlation coefficient can be used to measure the strength of the linear association. But as we already said, the correlation coefficient can also be used to measure the direction of a linear association, and that's where its sign plays the role. If correlation coefficient is positive, so it's greater than zero, well then linear association will be positive, and we will be able to observe the increasing pattern on the scatter plot. And if the correlation coefficient is negative or less than zero, then that will indicate the negative linear association, in which case the scatter plot will be showing the decreasing or descending pattern. And it's important to note that each set of bivariate data has its own unique corresponding correlation coefficient. How do we find it? One way is to compute it by hand using the formula. And here's the sample linear correlation coefficient formula. It may seem a little intimidating at first, but as we look closer, we're actually going to be able to recognize all parts of this formula. Let's talk about all these components of the formula and start connecting them to the example that we'll use for practicing this formula. In this example, we're going to have bivariate data descri describing the drilling. One thing that was measured for the drilling is the depth at which drilling begins, and these are different values. And another variable that, that's measured in this example is the time to drill 5 feet. For example, when drilling started at 120 feet below the surface, it took 7.47 minutes to drill 5 more feet, and so on. Okay, back to the formula. So let's look a bit closer to what we have here. First of all, we can notice that we have variable x and variable y. In this example, the depth at which drilling begins is the explanatory variable because it might explain or predict how long it's going to take to drill five more feet. Okay, let's go back to the formula. Remember, we always used x bar for sample mean. Well, that's still sample mean, but since we have two variables in this example, that specifically indicates the mean for the explanatory variable, variable x, and y bar indicates the mean or the average value for the response variable. Now, the lowercase s in the denominator indicates 
sample standard deviation as before but again we have two sample standard deviations here because we have two variables one refers to the explanatory variable and one refers to the response variable and then x sub i y sub i that represents values from the data set and you might recognize this expression inside the parentheses it's exactly the formula for computing z-score so basically here we compute z-score for each value of the explanatory variable and here we compute z-score for each value of the response variable the fact that those two parentheses are glued together means that we're multiplying those values this is sigma or summation and n in the denominator as before it represents sample size so we're going to try to apply this formula to this example just one quick note before we do that since all values from the data set participate in the formula this makes the correlation coefficient to be not resistant which means that extreme observations or observations that do not follow the overall pattern of the data we call them outliers they can affect the value of the linear correlation coefficient so that's why if we happen to have outliers in a set we better take them out before we compute correlation coefficient okay so let's try applying this formula so here it is again now overall the process is somewhat time consuming and tedious so we will be skipping most of the computations i just want to show you the order in which you do steps so here's our data set again the explanatory variable x the response variable y since the mean and standard deviation are involved in the formula we would start by computing them now mean is easy to compute even by hand we have to add up all those values and divide by how many we have now finding the standard deviation involves more work so again you do it either by hand or using calculator so here we found the mean and standard deviation for both variables and next we compute z-score for each value of the explanatory variable so we take 35 that's this xi x1 in other words subtract x bar this is the mean and divide by s sub x standard deviation and we do that for all values of the explanatory variable like that and that's this part of the formula next we're going to repeat this process but for the response variable variable y that's going to be this part of the formula so the values in this column were obtained by taking each individual y value subtracting y bar the mean and dividing the result by s sub y which is the standard deviation and we do that for each individual value of the response variable once we obtain this part of the formula then we're gonna perform multiplication we can multiply this two in other words it's multiplying values in column three by values in column four and here is the result of the product next we're gonna apply this sigma notation remember it's summation it just tells us add up all those values so we need to add up all those values in column five now this is what we will get and the last step is to divide this sum by n minus one remember n represents the sample size there are 12 pairs of variables in this sample this means that we're going to be dividing by 12 minus 1 which is 11 and the result is 0 0.773 so that's the correlation coefficient that describes this bivariate data before we talk more about it let's summarize this process um, i think you would agree with me now that it is pretty time consuming and, and tedious process so the good news is that we can find correlation coefficient using calculator and that's gonna take us way less time so let me show you how to find the linear correlation coefficient using the ti calculator and again i will continue with that exact same example so that we can compare our results the first step we're going to call step zero and this is because you will only need to do the step once on your calculator after that you can always start at step one in this step we're going to turn on what's called diagnostics and if you don't do the step r will simply not show up on your calculator okay so to turn on diagnostics you need to access catalog see how it's in blue on my calculator so i have to press second and then zero 
that's where the catalog is and then I'll need to scroll down until I see diagnostic so that's that should start with D right more right here diagnostic um, there is diagnostic of and diagnostic on I'm trying to turn it on so that's where I should be I press enter and I press enter again when I see that it says done it means that I turned it on once again you never have to do this step again unless you reset your calculator or you use someone else's calculator so once you turn it on this will be set up from now on next step is step one that's how you will start from now on and you will need to enter data press stat and then select edit by en uh, pressing enter well if you already have some data entered in the calculator you want to clear it and remember now we're working with bivariate data so we'll have two columns that we need to um, enter well to clear some old data you highlight the name of the column l1 or name of the list you press clear and then enter so it quickly erases everything from that column and i'll do the same with l2 clear enter now i'm going to enter our data from the example And now the second and final step, we're going to calculate the correlation coefficient. So once you have your data in, you will have to go to stat again. But this time we're going to switch to the calc menu. And there we're going to go down to line number four, lean reg. I press enter. Here calculator is checking what list I use to enter my data and yes that was list one and list two so everything looks good so I'm gonna go down to calculate and press enter and here we go remember that the sample correlation coefficient is denoted by lowercase r so that's where it is and um, we're gonna round it to as many decimal places as we need to match our example we're gonna round it to three decimal places it's 0.773 and it's the same answer as we got by finding the correlation coefficient using the formula and doing it by hand. We already know that the correlation coefficient is used to measure the strength of an association. But we can be even more specific. We can use the correlation coefficient to determine if the correlation between two variables is strong enough to conclude that a linear association exists between them and we have very clear and specific guidelines for that i'm going to continue with our example to illustrate that so as you remember we have two variables depth at which drilling begins and time to drill five more feet the sample size is 12 we have 12 observations for each of those two variables and we determined that the correlation coefficient is 0.773 and the question is, is this correlation coefficient high enough to say that relation exists between at which depth you start drilling and how long it's going to take you to drill five more feet? Is there a strong enough correlation between those two variables that we can say that one variable affects the other variable? Well, these are the steps to answer this question. In the first step, we need to determine the absolute value of the correlation coefficient. You might remember from the math class that absolute value is denoted by an absolute value of any number is always positive. So that's all you do in step one. In step two, we're going to look at the special table. It's called critical values or CV in short for correlation coefficient table. And in this table, we have two columns. The first one is denoted by lowercase n. Remember what it represents? Sample size. So the first one corresponds to the sample size and the second one corresponds to critical values. So as it says in step two, we need to find the critical value in the table for the given sample size. What is our sample size? It's 12. So I'm going to find 12 in the first column and look at the corresponding critical value. 
the critical value is 0 0.576. And now step 3 that basically answers the question, because it goes like this. If the absolute value of the correlation coefficient, in other words, the number that we determined in step 1, is greater than the critical value, then we can say that the linear association exists between the two variables. Otherwise, no linear association exists. Let's see what we have in our example. In our example, the absolute value of the correlation coefficient is greater than the critical value, which means that linear association exists between the depth at which drilling begins and time to drill 5 feet. And as we continue studying this topic, we're going to learn that in this case, we can use one variable to predict the value of another variable. And in the context of this example, there is a way to determine how long it's going to take to drill five more feet if you know at which depth you start. All, all that we're going to learn in the next video. And one last thing that I'd like to note in this video is the following. Correlation does not imply causality. So what it means is that even though in some examples the correlation coefficient might show a strong association between two variables, it doesn't mean that one variable is necessarily affecting the other variable. We should always use common sense when interpreting results. And here is one famous example of that. It's been determined that as ice cream sales increase, the rate of drawing depth increases sharply. Does this mean that ice cream consumption causes drowning? Well, the answer is no. While the strong association exists between those two variables, both of them are being affected by another variable lurking in the background. In fact, it's called a lurking variable. It's the one that affects the variables being studied, but is not included in the study. Can you guess what could be the lurking variable in this case? It's summer hot temperature. Both variables are being affected by that. More people tend to buy ice cream during the summer and more people tend to go swimming in the summer. Well, and unfortunately that results in higher rates of drawing depth. So this shows that while we are relying on math in statistics and computing correlation coefficient as example of that, we should never stop using common sense.